Hi everybody, today we're looking at the really ultimate and final Mixamo import process. We're using actually an external software here coming from Terribilis Studios and that for me is really the best way to add things like root motion bones, to fix errors with hand and then finger animation and so on. You go to the website, you go to the Mixamo converter, only now supporting even 60 frames per second and um, yeah, just download it. Look at the, at the feature list, it's quite long and do a direct dial download. It's just a zip archive that you have to extract into a folder and you start it from here. So there's not really an installation process. Just put it somewhere and um, be done. Good, having said that and having that downloaded, we go to our Mixamo. First thing that we need, we need to upload a mannequin that is really um, designed for Mixamo. You will find that in the newly extracted folder. You see here the mannequins. The mannequins have, for example, a money or a Quinn mannequin. They have also the older ones. And I just used the standard mannequin here. So SKM money FDX, put it to Mixamo, it get uploaded. And that means that Mixamo will actually retarget all the animation that we download for us on the Mixamo website. And we then really get animations that are directly compatible with the um, money sclet and can be used without anything, doing anything in Unreal. That's the plan. So upload succeeded. The auto rigger is freeing something and here we go. And yeah, it's moving, that's nice. Especially finger and hand animations are a big problem. So let's have a look, finding something to dance here. And uh, how about some hip hop, locking hip, hip hop. Yeah, that looks very good. And we download that one. So we stay with, let's say 60 frames because it's a part that, whereas Unreal actually is done at 30 frames, but let's try that out. So we download it and here we now have to put it into a folder called incoming FBX. Make sure that you don't delete the two files that are already there. Um, that is what I did. <laughs> and um, then you go back to the, to the program, you start it, you enter, just click here, you enter the conversion process. Here's some tutorials. And down here it automatically detects just yes, one new FBX. I could here define a couple of root motion parameters, but I don't have them here, so we keep it at zero. But the root bone, for example, is added, so you can actually enable root motion in Unreal. And then you start a conversion process, and the conversion process will copy that file, convert it into a new folder, same um, main directory, it's called outgoing FBX, and that FBX you just drop into your Unreal folder and it's directly compatible with our ASCII mannequin, the Unreal 5 mannequin skeleton. So here are the settings, kind of standard mostly. I uh, just put the animation to 60 and here we go. I also checked here to create a mesh for it. That's actually not really necessary. Let's delete that back animation itself is fine and yeah so delete that and here let's have a look at the animation itself yeah that looks good especially look at the fingers and hands that was a weak point if you do it directly in unreal and that is fixed here so that's extremely valuable for us good now the question is how do we actually use these animations in lyra could we just use them or do we have to do a bit more setup here yeah naturally we have to but at least we have a very well working um, animation in here that we now think about how to use. Yeah, it's a good one. So what we need is a couple of curves, a couple of tracks, and we actually have to bind this animation to one of the Lyra processes, one of the animation blueprints. If I filter here the Lyra directory for animation blueprint, you see these anim layers. The animation in Lyra is layered and where you actually define what animation is used when, that is this anim layer here. So I filter for jog and I want to have this animation that I imported from Mixamo being the new jog forward animation. 
It's not really 100% fitting, but it's enough for our demo process here. So I jog, jog forward and want to use the new one. What I get is an error. You may only reference assets from a couple of things. For that, I go to the project settings, to game, asset referencing policy. And here I can tell him that there are a couple of domains that are allowed to reference. For example, here adding one, our Bastian plugin or your plugin, whatever. So that is one thing that you have to do. And that will then allow us to actually use the new animation that we imported, even if it's sitting in our plugin folder. But you know, we never will modify the Lara folder itself. So that is fine. So compile and save. Yeah, that looks good. Let's start and let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. Simply because it does not find our um, gameplay experience. If you look at the error messages, you will see a red notice there. Going back there. The default gameplay experience is something but has failed to resolve into an asset. If something has failed to resolve into an asset, it's always that the asset manager is not allowed to scan that directory or does not know where that directory could be. Solving it is quite easy. You go back to your project settings and into the asset manager and the asset manager um, has a long list of things that it actually looks for. One of them are Lyra gameplay, exp uh, Lyra experience definitions. And we are adding here a directory and pointed to, in our case, the plugin. I have it in the main folder of the plugin and that's it. Let's try that out again. Yeah, clear the lock so that we see something. And this looks actually much better. So yeah, our Kratos is running. And we also, if you look here, it has this very strange looking forward animation. It's not really fitting, but that's fine for us. The big problem that we have here, if you look at the footsteps, we are losing our footstep effects and we are losing the sounds of the footsteps. So meaning while the animation is playing now and so looks good from a kind of um, animation point of view, what we need here is a couple of notifiers that actually something is happening. There's actually an old way and a new way to do it. One is kind of obsolete. That is the standard here. Um, but all of them are defined with this data animation data modifiers. Animation data modifier you find here in the window. Prerequisite is that you have the plugin enabled. It should be enabled by default, but better check it. Go to plugins and search for animation data. And you see it here, it's enabled. Make sure it is, then you really can see this window here. There are a couple of animation modifiers that are predefined. One of them, for example, is the distance curve. So the question, how far is the character running within that animation? That's important if you use root motion to calculate if you root motion through a wall, for example. You just select it, apply it, and you see it will generate this distance curve. And distance curve here is about 180, so nearly two meters, that this animation cycle is running in one thing. I can remove it again. I can leave the calculated curve on it. And then we have that. Next thing is about our footsteps. How do, do we do that? There's this footstep effect tag modifier. That's the way to go. Here you will create a couple of points, notifiers that are firing the moment your feet is touching the ground. And that is what we need here. The other thing is the sync marker, marker anim modifier that is telling when your feet are crossing the route. So kind of going forward, going backward. And if your route is moving accordingly. So if I now trigger that, you will see again, this a bit strange looking animation, but what you see here is the footstep and you also can maybe hear the sounds. So that was successful. The moment I really add this notifiers, it is enough for the game engine to notify something's happening and playing, for example, a sound or playing a Nigeria effect. If you click at this anime effect footstep, you see it's really coupled to a gameplay tag. In this case, it's the land tag might be better. That should be the walk one. And yeah, as always with gameplay tags, you have that tag. And a lot of things are listening to the tag and firing the moment it's actually happening. If I look here at the reference scrolling very, very down, you will see it's a Lyra context effect library that is coupled to it. And this decides what actually happens 
in relation to the ground that you're walking on. So if you look here, there are a couple of um, default surfaces defined like concrete or glass or default, or it can be a grass thing or snow. And depending on that, you get obviously a different footstep. So the moment um, this thing is fired, it will look on what thing, or what ground are you walking? And then an effect that you can define here is fired in our case, for example, a sound or a graphical effect or whatever. And yeah, if I just scroll in there, that is just this sound being played. Okay, now we really have the final <laughs> and definite uh, way to import Mixamo animation with really, really little work. We can add um, visible, visible and audible effects. And I think, yeah, that's it. Let's move on how to use that animation. Thank you very much for listening.